Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to export your Rhino 3D file to Illustrator and prepare it for laser cutting. I'm going to be using the technique that I use for the laser cutter that I'm used to, which might be different from the software that your laser cutter uses. Um, I think that it should all be pretty much the same, um, at least close enough to where you'll be able to find the differences and fix them for the software that you're using if it's different from the software that I use. But I'm not getting into the laser cutting software. I'm just getting into the process for setting up the file. So, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, in my Rhino file, you can see here I just have a very simple box with some box joints. And I have a lid. And on my lid, I have a little lip so that it fits nice and snug. Um, the first thing that you want to make sure that you do is have your unit set up. Because we're going to be laser cutting and scaling and all that stuff, we need to make sure that um, we're working in inches. Um, for most for most architectural models or, or just any kind of hobby model that you might be using this for, um, you're going to be doing it at, at some inch scale and it will be a lot easier if you set up your file to be in inches. So in Rhino, I'm going to type in units. I'm going to go up here, model units, I have it set to inches and my precision is at one eighth of an inch. You, I mean, If you built your model correctly then you probably don't need to change this, but laser cutters are way more precise than that. They're probably closer to the 32nd or 64th um, but because this model is very simple I'm just going to leave it at 1A. So the first thing that we want, or the next thing that we want to do is um, notice things about our geometry. So for this box I know that each side is the exact same piece. It's just rotated 90 degrees each time and the top is just a square glued to another square and the same for the bottom. So it's that, this is actually a really simple model. Um, and in Rhino 5, you have this thing called Gumball. And so I'm going to be using this um, for convenience and workflow. Basically, uh, I'm going to pull this face away using the Gumball, and I'm going to do it as a copy. So I'm going to hold Alt, and I'm going to click this green. I'm going to drag it forward, and then it's going to make a copy of it. Um, then the next thing I want to do is take the uh, base curve, and pull it off this piece of geometry. So I'm going to type in DUPF for dupe face border duplicate. It's going to ask you to select the face that you want to duplicate. And we're going to, we're going to um, select the big face, the, the, uh, the uh, panel. And then we're going to right click to confirm. Then we're just going to go ahead and delete this, this uh, two dimensional piece of geometry. And what you have left over is a join. Uh, single curve. Um, so now I know I have four of these and so I'm going to take this, I'm going to use Alt on the keyboard and on the gumball I'm going to take the red arrow and I'm just going to drag it over three more times. And so now I have all four sides of my cube um, ready. Now I'm going to do the same for the top and the bottom. So I'm going to repeat that command, dupe face border, select the top and you need to do the same for this piece, for the uh, lower piece too. Then we select our curves. And then I like to make sure everything is on the same plane. Go ahead and use uh, the gumball, this rotate around the x-axis axis, and rotate that geometry. Make it on the same plane. And I have, so this is my lid, and the, the bottom of the box is the exact same, so I'm just going to copy that over with the gumball. I'm going to hide my geometry. I'm going to select all of this. I'm just going to um, do the move command, so I'm going to type M. I'm going to select a corner of this uh, curve here, and then I'm going to type 0, comma, 0, comma, 0, and it's going to put it at the lower origin. Uh, so the next thing. I need to do is scale it down so that it actually fits on my laser cutter bed. The bed that I have is um, 24 inches by 18 inches. And so this is 24 by 18 inch rectangle. And as you can see, none of this will fit on there. So, uh, each of these finger joints are about one foot. I made this really big just to, show, just to demonstrate the scaling part of the tutorial. Um, so I want each of these finger joints to be a half, half an inch. 
so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a curve that's one foot so type in one foot and then right on top of that I'm going to make another curve that's a half inch and so I'm going to use these two lines as reference to scale all the geometry that I want to laser cut. So I'm going to select that geometry and I cut scale and it's going to ask you for a origin point and that's going to be one endpoint of that that foot long curve that you created and then this, the second reference point is going to be the other end of that. So now, so now everything that you've selected is going to go from one foot down to wherever you uh, choose and in this case we made another line that half inch so we're just going to slide this down until we hit that half inch and you can see it's snapping to that end point. So now each of these finger joints should be one half inch and they are. We're going to go ahead and go to the top view and move this closer to our grid. Same with our uh, laser cut bed. So now everything should fit in there much nicer. When you're dealing with more complex geometry, uh, fitting all these pieces in here might be a very difficult and frustrating task. And so there's a plugin for Rhino. It's not free, but there's a trial out there and it's insanely useful. It's called Rhino Nest. I'm going to show you guys how to use that. Um, so just type in Rhino Nest. Uh, go ahead and select your objects and you only want to select the objects that you're going to cut out. You don't want to select uh, this box here. That's that's just there for our reference. So we're going to click OK and then the one here is basically how many of each of these pieces that um, you're going to make. So in theory I could have just made uh, the top and then the second part of the top and then the side and just, and just uh, change the number of each of these but it's easier for me to visualize all the pieces um, and you can do that with this little um, sheet here so you can change the quantity and all that but we're not going to do that uh, so we're going to go ahead and click next we need to specify the sheet size and in this case it uses the units of your Rhino document so we're going to do inches and it's 24 inches by 18 inches um, we want it to all fit on there but we're just going to leave multi-sheet enabled just in case um, it doesn't fit. We want to see how many pieces it takes up and then we can possibly rescale our model or figure out another solution but we won't run into that problem with this. And then you have all these uh, parameters that help um, define how Rhino Nest is going to nest your objects. Um, distance from item to item is how close they come to overlapping. You definitely don't want overlapping and you don't want it too close because of the precision of the laser. After having to cut through a specific material uh, multiple times, it starts to thicken. And so if you get too close, then it starts to be a problem with your uh, the gaps in between each piece. So right here is about a sixteenth um, or an eighth inch. And then distance from sheet, uh, item to sheet, another eighth inch. And then freedom. Um, Fixed is usually, I would imagine, good if you're cutting on something that has a pattern where you want it to be uniform across all of it. So if we rotate one of these side panels vertically and this has like flower pattern on it or like a specific wood grain, uh, then that piece will be different than the rest of the pieces. And that's when you would want it to be fixed. But if you're cutting on something like chipboard or, or something like that, then using uh, Freedom um, allows it to rotate a complete 360 degrees to fit it on to um, under this. Um, so we're going to go ahead and just leave it to free. Uh, the next nesting criterion, we want it to do uh, minimize X so that it, it'll basically nest it from left to right and then as much of the leftover material as possible will be on the right side and that's just in case you want to use that piece um, later on. It'll be uh, there for you to use and it won't be just leftover waste that's that you can't use for anything else. Um, use rectangular shape basically creates a box around your whole uh, geometry. I'll show you right here. So basically, it'll create a box just like this, 
around your geometry. So even though you have these negative spaces, it won't allow any geometry to go within this little box, even though that within this box isn't part of what you're cutting out. So to visualize it, if your tolerance is like a sixteenth of an inch and from here to here is an eighth inch, it still won't allow you to do that because um, rectangular shape encompasses the whole perimeter of your object. Uh, I usually leave that off, especially if you have very organic shaped um, items. So go ahead and click next and then we're going to run execute. So everything is going from left to right and you have all this extra uh, stuff that you can uh, use for other cutting and this is uh, less wasteful. So then go ahead and click next and you can kind of see how much of um, the material you've used and how much is left over. So now we need to export it to Illustrator and we're going to just delete this border here. This is the bed that uh, RhinoNest can find everything to. So we're going to select our geometry and we're going to type in export and then we're going to, I usually use uh, AutoCAD because we're going to be importing into Illustrator. Um, I use AutoCAD and it, it's a lot easier to scale and do the units when importing AutoCAD into Illustrator rather than importing Illustrator into Illustrator, even though that sounds like it doesn't make sense. Um, I'll explain when we get there. So go ahead and do uh, DWG. And you need to make sure that export scheme, you have it set to 2004 lines and untick both of these. Then we're going to go to our Illustrator and find our file. And we're going to open it. Now I don't have AutoCAD on this computer, but you don't need it. So even though I can't open this file with anything other than Illustrator, uh, that's fine. And we're going to open it and it's going to ask you how do you want to scale it. Since we already scaled it in Rhino, we just want to make sure that uh, the actual units are correct. So one Rhino unit is equal to one inch. And that's exactly what we want. So go ahead and click OK. Then we need to select our artboard down here and change the dimensions to our laser cutting bed, so 24 by 18. And this is where it starts to get tricky because your laser cutter might be different from the laser cutter that I use. My laser cutter requires that your stroke is at 0 0.001 and only 0 0.001. And then it requires that your document color mode is an RGB and that the color that you use um, is is RGB as well. So right now it just says AutoCAD color. You need to go to this flyout right here and click RGB. And so cut lines are typically red. So we want to have zero green, zero blue, and 255 for red. And now it's very faint, but you can still see it. Um, the laser cutter I have allows you to use red, black, or blue. And um, usually I just skip black and then for blue I is for just cutting like a little uh, like an inscription or text something that you don't want to cut all the way through and then red I have um, reserved for cutting all the way through um, but that's completely up to your uh, laser cutting software and your laser cutter but that is it then you just go ahead and save this as an illustrator fire file Adobe Illustrator and then you can just print it from there. So you're, the way it should be set up is you hit print and then it says your printer and then your laser cutter should show up into this list. And then from there you can fit it and all that. And uh, that's everything. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If it was useful for you, maybe you can share it with your friends. Go ahead and comment, like, subscribe. Thanks guys.